Welcome back to another MLB season preview, and for our fifth and final team of the American League East, it's going to be the Boston Red Sox. They had a very, very disappointing year last year, finishing below the Orioles. They were in the cellar of the East with a 78-84 and record. While that is fifth place, if you look at most divisions, fifth place had a lot worse record than 78-84, and although they did lose some big guys in the offseason, kind of like Xander Bogarts. They thought they'd be able to re-sign him, but they went to the Padres. At least they were able to lock Lock down Rafael Devers long term 300 plus million dollar mega deal. But, anyways, I'm going to be going over their lineup, going over their rotation, bullpen, bench, all of that, and then talking about my expectations for the Red Sox in this upcoming 2023 season. So, starting things off with the lineup, we're going to start things off left field. It's a new guy, Masataka Yoshida. If you look at all the projections on fan, fan graphs and all of that, they expect him to have a huge year. Fan graphs expects 18 homers, 302 average, 380 on base percentage. That does seem very high to most of us, but who knows? Maybe they know something we don't. He was a big signing. They gave him about $100 million to come on over, and he's going to be their projected leadoff hitter and left fielder. At shortstop, it's going to be Kike Hernandez. It's going to be interesting to see him taking the shortstop role. While he didn't leave in the offseason, Trevor Story was injured. He had to get a Tommy John-type surgery this offseason. It's crazy that he wasn't able to get it at the end of the season or something like that, but it's going to prevent him to miss almost all of the season, if not all of the season, which seems like the likely option. At third base, it's superstar Rafael Devers. Just won the best in the game. He's going to hit for a good average. He's going to hit 30 plus bombs, 100 plus ribbies. Just Rafael Devers is one of the best pieces to build around in all of baseball. A designated hitter projected when Rafael Devers isn't at the hot corner, it's Justin Turner. Now, I think he could be versatile. I think he could play some second base, some first base, but he's coming over here as a winner, as all he has done in his career is win, obviously, because he's been with the Dodgers. They're going to bring him in on the two-year deal, and I think he could be a good veteran presence. He's still got some left as far as talent, so we'll see him there. In right field, it's Alex Verdugo. Hopefully, he can take a leap and become some 1% of the player of the player that they expected when they traded Mookie Betts with him as the headliner in the package because Jeter Downs, he didn't work out, so Alex Verdugo is the last thread that they're hanging on to from that Mookie Betts trade. In center field, it's Adam Duvall. I actually liked this signing. I thought a lot of other teams could have made this signing. Adam Duvall Duvall is a guy that's hit 40 homers in the season before, so he has 30 plus homer potential. And as a seven hitter, he doesn't need that, or six hitter, he doesn't need to have the best average. He could be a power hitter that could be a run producer for you. The seven hitter is slated to be Tristan Casas. He's a top prospect, former first round pick from 2018. I'm excited to see him play because he'll get a ton of run this year. Hopefully he can live up to his expectations as a prospect. At second base, Christian Arroyo, catcher Reese McGuire. And then the bench isn't anything too crazy. Jorge Alfaro, he's their backup catcher, gotten from the Padres in free agency. Bobby Dahlbeck, he's got that big power, just has to put it together. And then Yu Chang and Rob Refsnyder. Rob Refsnyder, I don't hate him as a bench back. At. And now for the rotation, this is where things get interesting. Chris Sale is listed as their ace, their opening day starting pitcher one. But when was the last time that Chris Sale was able to put together a full healthy season? That's going to be a big question. And then Corey Kluber slated in as their number two. What do you expect from Corey Kluber with the age that he is right now? He's entering his age 37 season. Then Nick Pavetta as a three. James Paxson as a four. We didn't see him pitch all last year. So what can you get from him? And then Garrett Whitlock transitioning from the bullpen. And so we don't know what we're going to be able to get from these starting pitchers as far as health goes and as far as longevity, how many innings you're going to be able to get from them. The bullpen, this will be interesting because they made two signings, Kenley Jansen and Chris Martin. Those were the two signings, so they'll be there. And then John Schreiber, he's in there. Tanner Houck, they were considering moving him to the starting rotation. Maybe we can see him get a spot start or two, depending on what's going on. Jolie Rodriguez, Ryan Brazier, Richard Blyer, who they just acquired from the Marlins in a trade, and then Cutter Crawford to round at that bullpen. They've also got some guys like Brian Bayo, who's an anticipated prospect that can slot into that starting rotation. As far as the guys they have injured, I already mentioned Trevor Story. And then they also made a trade for Adalberto Mondesi, which actually I don't mind. He's a high upside player. He's coming off a torn ACL though, so we'll see when he's able to make his return or be able to make his Red Sox debut. He's coming over from the Royals. When he's healthy, he's a very exciting player. As far as expectations, I just see the AL East as two tiers. I see 
a tier of teams that can win it with the Yankees, the Blue Jays, and the Rays. And then I see the Orioles and Red Sox. Sure, the Orioles, they're going to have a full season of ad league on their Henderson, possibly Grayson Rodriguez. And they did finish five wins better than the Red Sox last year. But I could see them battling for fourth and fifth place. I could very well see the division ending with the Red Sox in fourth, like the Orioles last year, and then the Orioles in fifth. Who knows? We'll have to see how this plays out. What do you think about the Red Sox in 2023?